The following program is brought to you in part by the film Backdoor Channels, The Price of Peace. Welcome to another Leon China Report. We have a really eclectic and exciting show tonight. Uh, my name is Oded Rose. I'm, I've born, been born in Israel 50 years ago. I'm uh, actually a CEO of an Israeli company that sells uh, Israeli technology all over the world. But um, my passion is uh, creating and now starting a school, an international school that will bring students uh, starting next month, uh, students from all over the world. Uh, at uh, 11th and 12th grade to study here in Israel the International Baccalaureate. It's a very well-known uh, international uh, uh, diploma for high school. Uh, it's accepted all over the world by all the universities. And we are uh, going to bring uh, 100 students every year uh, to a boarding school right here in Israel. And 20% uh, will be Israelis. 20% will be non-Israeli Arabs and 60% from the rest of the world. We already have now uh, 85 students who will start the first year and uh, they are coming from over 30 countries including Palestinians uh, and Ara other Arab countries and Muslim countries and literally from all continents. We have from Asia, we have from uh, all of Europe, from Africa, we have from North America, South America. And, I, and I'm, a, I'm a person of dream. I dream at night, and I get up in the morning and I say, oh, I had this dream, I have to do something about it. <laughs> I, you know, I, I didn't go the route, the route you took in life. I, I, I took another route um, of technology, of science, and now of education. I, I believe my, my life mission is to create this school, and this is just the first school. I hope to have other schools like that around the world that will be uh, centers of change, of regional change. I will give you an example. There's a wonderful school that very few people know about in South Africa. It's called the African Leadership Academy. It is the same model as ours. Two years, 11th and 12th grade, they bring students from only from Africa, from the 50 African states, and they bring them together, and it's a school of leadership because they believe that they need to create a strong leadership in Africa that will help take this continent with all its vast resources and create a better environment, a better society for the African people. And that's what this school is there to do. And it's been running now for five or seven years. And now they're starting another layer. They're going to create the African Leadership Universities. And they're opening the first university in Mozambique. And in 10 years, they hope to have 20 universities. And in 10 years, they hope to have a quarter of a million graduates of the African leadership system, the academy and the universities. And by that, they are hoping to start to make a difference in Africa. We are here in, in the Middle East. I am an Israeli. I am concerned about peace, about people living here, that my four-year-old son in 14 years he will not have to fight anymore. But I'm hoping that something like what we are doing will help to make a difference because it will show people that it's possible. Why not? Why not? You know, that's a good, it's a good question. I think what you're referring to is why is it called the Eastern Mediterranean and not the School of the Middle East? I think uh, School of the Middle East has a very heavy connotation. You know, it's like full of... Uh, religious, historical, political connotations. In Eastern Mediterranean, it's, you think of, of, of the blue sea, you think of uh, vacation, you think of something positive. And it's, uh, I, don't, I didn't want it to be very politically uh, related, the, the name. So that's why we chose a different name. Uh, we, well, we have Palestinians, 
Um, uh, we have a student from Saudi Arabia, we have one from Pakistan, one from Afghanistan. Uh, and uh, in our summer course uh, that we have every year now for uh, the last uh, five years, uh, this year we have Moroccan students, Jordanian students. Last year we had uh, a student, one student from Iraq, from Baghdad, who came with an Iraqi passport with a special permit. Uh, we had uh, Moroccan students, we had Egyptian students. And we, we've been doing now this for several years, the summer courses. And this year we're starting the, the first year of the school. The school's name is uh, Eastern Mediterranean International School. And its mission is to use education as a force for peace and sustainability in the Middle East. Uh, with the Palestinians, who are the vast majority of the Arab students, uh, we have a, a special partnership with a local Palestinian NGO in, uh, in Ramallah. And we are uh, working together. Um, it's an educational and peace organization there. And we've been uh, in partnership now. And they know all the, or most of the high schools in the West Bank. They know the principals, they know some of the teachers. And they approach those uh, schools and ask them to nominate students because uh, the international baccalaureate that we will teach is, uh, is known in the West Bank. It's known all over the world and uh, people would like to do it. It's a big attraction. We also offer full scholarships. Most, almost all the students get either 90% or 100% scholarship in our school. Uh, the, the, the funds are coming from various sources. Uh, some are coming from the Ministry of Education itself that is supporting 100% of our students. It's a special uh, relationship we have with the Ministry of Education. They are very supportive of this project and uh, again very open-minded. They believe, I don't know if you know, the, the current um, uh, slogan of the Ministry of Education is the other is me. And actually it was nicely said by the Director General of the Ministry that there can't be anything more more Acheruani, more other is me, than our school. Because you bring people literally from all over the world, different cultures, different religions, and they all come because they want to come. They come, they go away from their families, and they come here for two years because they want to be part of this very special, very unique experience, and something that will hopefully make a difference uh, in our region and maybe in other places in the world. Those students and their families believe in this mission. They believe that they are there as soldiers of peace and they want to be soldiers of peace, those students and their families. There are concerns, I'm not uh, you know, hiding this, and there are some fears, but uh, you know, this, this is not a new model. I'm not inventing a model. Me, myself, I was in a school like that when I was 16. I was very lucky, very fortunate uh, to be chosen to represent Israel in a school like that 30 years ago in Canada. And I went there, there were uh, 200 students in two years from 80 different countries, including one Palestinian, one uh, Egyptian, and one Israeli, just the three of us. And I, and I came back, you know, after my military service, I said, you know, we should have a school like that here. Because here it's where it matters. Canada, it's great. But, you know, you want to teach the Canadians how to live in peace with the Americans, or there is a school in Norway. Do you want to teach the Norwegians how to live in peace with the Swedish? It's great, but where you really need to do it, it's here. So I said, and that was 25 years ago when I started thinking about it, and I had this dream for a long time, and now this dream, you know, fortunately, is, is coming to a fruition. Uh, when I was a student in Tel Aviv University, I decided I have to do something about this. And I, and I said, okay, I cannot open the school right away. This was in the middle of the Intifada, 1992, before the Oslo agreements. I said, what, what am I going to do? So I came up with the idea, let's do a summer pro project. And let's see if it's possible. You know, a lot of people told me nobody can uh, open a school like that in Israel because nobody will come here. Definitely no Arabs will come here. And I said, I don't believe that. I think there are enough people who believe in peace and want to be together and want to, to work towards peace. And I created this uh, summer course in the, in the uh, Negev. I did it in Sdebokel. Uh, together with the uh, uh, Ben Gurion University, with the Midrashat Debokel, and brought um, six Palestinians, six Israelis, and 20 students from 10 countries in Europe. 30, 30 kids. I was maybe 25 at the time, or 20, 27 at the time. 
I had no clue about business, I had no clue about how to raise money, and somehow I managed to do that. I raised about $30,000 to pay for all that. And the students came, and I want to tell you, other than my two years in Canada when I was 16, which was an amazing experience, the second most amazing experience, again, other than my kids being born, of course, I must say that, um, uh, was, was this experience uh, of bringing those students together in the middle of the Intifada. I got a special permit from Aluf Pikud Merkaz, from the um, general of the Central Command, to bring those students in from Ramallah. All of them were in from Ramallah. And they came, and they stayed. And you know, I'll tell you a small story. It was an incredible experience for me and for them. I got uh, one, of the, one of the Palestinian students, who was 16, Never learned how to swim. Didn't know how to swim. And there was a swimming pool in Sdeboker. And every day we stop around uh, 12 and we have a few hours of uh, rest because it was so hot in, in the summer. And I took, uh, there were two kids who didn't know how to swim. This uh, Palestinian boy, Aziz, his name was, and, pa and a girl from Bulgaria didn't know. So I taught them how to swim. And then after a week, I took them to Elat. And we snorkeled in the Red Sea over the Japanese gardens. You know, it's a nature reserve there. I'm a diver. Uh, I'm a diver and a marine scientist, so I took them to see this. And I, uh, and, and uh, we, we, for about one hour, we were swimming like this, the Bulgarian girl and the Palestinian boy and me, just swimming over the coral, and I was explaining to them. And then, after the school, uh, this course ended, I got a letter. Now, remember 1992, the middle of the Intifada a letter from Aziz, and he wrote to me, I don't remember exactly how he wrote, but he said, I felt that you were my older brother. You showed me that there are worlds that I didn't know even existed. And he referred both to the underwater world, but also to the world of peace. So this is an, an anecdote to an answer, a long answer to your short question, how they felt. And so, uh, you know, there's uh, this guy called uh, Mark Zuckerberg invented a great thing called Facebook. I became, they called me the Facebook animal. <laughs> I, because of necessity, I started uh, working in the Facebook and other people who are now working with me. And we are reaching people all over the world. And it's not very difficult. You reach people, you, you can advertise, you can target groups that have special interests. And that's what we do. And we reach, I tell you, we have in uh, three months th not tens of thousands of likes on our, web, our, web, uh, on our Facebook page. And uh, we got students, I, uh, we got hundreds of applicant, applications or hundreds of people who, who asked about information. I think we had about 200 applications. And we selected 80 or 85 students from that. How do we select them? They have to have good grades. So we have to bring a proof of their uh, school diploma. They have to be a reasonable English. Doesn't have to be perfect English, but reasonable. Because the I International Baccalaureate, the IB, is a very uh, tough program. Um, they have to show proof of community involvement and leadership. Now, at age 15, 16, you can't expect them to be leaders of the world, but they have to show something. And they all have to go through at least two interviews uh, over Skype. Uh, with our staff. We have a, a selection committee that uh, they have one interview. If they pass the first interview, they go through a second interview that also has uh, the school psychologist, uh, school advisor. And, sh and she sometimes can see if there's so some people who have, uh, I wouldn't call problems, but issues. Uh, so we, we have uh, all this. Uh, we need uh, a couple of recommendations from the school principal, from the, from the teacher. We, we, we ask for them to write an essay, things like that. First of all, uh, we, we had an international search for a director, for the director of the school. And uh, we're very fortunate to find uh, Mr. John Potter, who has uh, over 30 years of experience in education, international education. And especially he has uh, 15 years of uh, running schools in Muslim countries. In the last 10 years, he started and ran a school in Turkey, in Izmir in Turkey, an international school, and he was the, the principal. Before that, he worked in Dubai and in Malaysia or Indonesia. Uh, we have three other teachers who are uh, non-Israeli and about, uh, I think, uh, nine or 10 who are Israeli 
but most of them have uh, international backgrounds. So either they are uh, new immigrants uh, from various countries or have lived in other countries. And they all can teach in English. We are uh, in partnership with the Tel Aviv University. And we are together with Tel Aviv University are developing a very unique program that is also being uh, approved by the Ministry of uh, Education as an experimental program. And uh, we are developing a program that will combine entrepreneurship, sustainability and peace, these three elements. We, will, we are going to provide the, the, the children with, or the, the students with um, skills of entrepreneurs, how to create and how to take dreams into reality and to address issues around sustainability which are, there are a lot of big issues of sustainability, water and other things here, economic issues, social issues, and peace. And these three elements, yes, we're going to give them those skills, those tools, how to dream and then take those dreams into reality. We call our school the school of change because, for change, because we want those students to be agents of change. It's, it's going to be huge, it's going to be hugely successful because the kind of partners that we have, the Ministry of Education is fully behind us, the Foreign Ministry is fully behind us, they ask all the consulates to help us, you ask how we got students, the, cons the consulates all over the world, 100 consulates, send uh, invitations to high school to send candidates. All, all, this, all the students will, be, will live in dorms in Akfar Ayarok, uh, they live four in a room, which is the standard in these kind of schools. Girls in a one wing and the boys in another wing, uh, four in a room. So they're all separated, especially the, for the, because of Muslims and some other religious students. It's very, very, it's a big concern. And, you know, we had here a visit from the Palestinian families. All the Palestinian students came to visit us about one, one month ago with their families. It was an incredible day. They came here with three buses because they had to come from Tulkarem from uh, Ramallah and from Bethlehem. They had to come in three different buses because <laughs> you can't get them all in one, in one place. And uh, they came for a, a day to our school. We, they had breakfast and then they had a tour and they had questions and we answered and then we had uh, some uh, more information sessions. And the, one of the questions was, you know, how are you going to you know, make sure that the girls can maintain their tradition? And we told them, here is what we're going to do. Uh, they separate, they have their place to pray if they want, and everything like that. Peace is such a big word, you know. And people have to re realize it has to start with a compromise. It has to start with accepting the other side, that there are other side are people. And, you know, it's, it's unfortunate, but there's very little that is being done in Israel and on the Palestinian side, or the Arab side. Uh, to try and teach the young generation about the other people. Palestinians are talking about themselves, the Israelis are talking about themselves, each side has its own narrative and there's very little uh, communication between the two sides on the, on, the, on the people level. Our school, the school that we are now starting, is, is aiming to address that. You know, I, t I, I want to tell you something. When I started talking to the Ministry of Education about this program, they thought I was crazy. Yeah. But now, three years later, they are fully behind this program. I was able to slowly, slowly get them to understand that it's for the benefit of Israel. To connect Israelis to the world and to bring the world to Israel, it's for the benefit of Israel. Why not? The name of our school is the Eastern Mediterranean International School. We are going to bring, we are bringing, it's opening next month, we are bringing 100 students from all over the world. 20% are Israeli, 20% are non-Israeli Arabs, mostly Palestinian from the West Bank, and 60% are from over 30 different countries around the world, from Latin America, North America, all over Europe, Africa, Asia, and even as far as New Zealand. We have students who are coming from all over the world, and they all come because they believe, believe in the mission of the school, which is to use education as a force for peace and sustainability in the Middle East. Thank you very much for having me.